Let me start. Okay. Hello, uh, I'm happy to see so many people here because uh, this is farthest corner of this huge building. So I could start <laughs> this presentation with like far, far away was one presentation happening. So welcome folks. Uh, I would like to start uh, my presentation with introducing my engineer's co-worker, uh, sorry, uh, co-speaker uh, Madhuri uh, Kumari from Intel. And today we are going to talk about one of the biggest questions that was asked last year Magnum and Rana. So I will start uh, with a quick introduction of Murana and Maduri will continue with introduction of Magnum to who don't know well uh, this project. Then I will quickly apologize for one small confusion that I created uh, half a year ago. Then question of the century, Murana or Magnum. We'll continue that with a short demo uh, by Maduri, and finally we'll give an answer to you guys. And we'll listen to questions from you. So Murana, this slide is, goes from one year to another year, but I really like it. So Murana is an application catalog for OpenStack, and our mission is to provide ability to application developers uh, create easily uh, application for the cloud and bring the application to the cloud as a main uh, goal and also give cloud admins a way to publish and provide this application to the end users. So end user who using this cloud can go uh, to the OpenStack, click one button, and receive the WordPress, uh, the CRM system, or whatever, in one, one click of a button. So uh, I will start with what is actually Murana. Murana consists of four parts. First part is a catalog. It's kind of obvious. Second part is most interesting thing, which I would like to talk today, is that Murana is application interoperability layer. We also have orchestration, some part of it, and configuration management. Because in order to deploy application uh, from like beginning to the end, you need all the four parts. Uh, there's also a historical reason why orchestration and configura configuration management was built into Murana. Murana started in 2012 as Windows Data Center as a service. And basically, given that in um, OpenStack, there was not so much Windows at all, uh, we needed something to provision a uh, machine with the Windows and then do configuration management on it. Install software, configure the software. At that time, we used Heat for orchestration. So basically, we at, to, in 2012 and still now, Provisioners uh, do cloud, uh, resource allocation in the cloud using heat. And uh, at that time, we used uh, Agent and PowerShell for configuration management. So going further, uh, first two parts, catalog and up interoperability layer, I think is the most important part in Murana and what it makes Murana different from other products in OpenStack. So catalog is represented by glare and a little bit of Murana API and a dashboard. Application interoperability layer is represented by Murana PL and Murana Engine, which implemented. Murana PL is a language, uh, application definition language, which we designed in Murana uh, team. And it's slightly different from other languages in a stack, like Heat and Tosca, for example, by being uh, imperative. So basically, it's object-oriented, uh, imperative language given, that gives you ability to define your application and chance to this application with, interact with other application using this object-oriented interface. So each application provides you an um, interface, so many workflows, so many properties which you can access from other application. And this is how we can easily combine applications in one stack and make them reusable components truly reusable, which you can swap at any point of time in design time when you're creating your stack in a dashboard. Uh, Murana Engine, which is uh, responsible for, uh, for up interoperability inter layer and also for orchestration, uh, has uh, several major parts. We use Heat and for resource allocation in the cloud. Heat Translator, we use a separate engine for deploying Tosca applications, which actually does uh, translate uh, Tosca to Heat and then feed it to the Heat. 
We also support a uh, heat templates and heat a solo orchestrator in Murana. So you can take your heat template, make application of it without writing any line of Murana PL code. Just taking this template and pushing to the heat and giving at the same time catalog capabilities to the end user. And you can integrate any third party uh, engine to the Murana, uh, like Cloudify, we did, in, we did it in Metaka. Configuration management in Murana uh, available only when you use Murana PL. Obviously, in heat, it's available through heat, but if you're talking about Murana stack, in Murana, it's available through Murana agent. So essentially, a small piece of software which is installed in uh, your VM, either when you're spawning this VM or pre-built before, and which gives you ability to interact uh, between your application and this VM and in command, uh, sending commands to this VM, like execute this, give me these results, do this, do that. And do this and do that is bash scripts, puppet manifests, chief cookbooks, or PowerShell, in case of you are doing configuration management on Windows. So this is the whole stack of Murana. And once again, first two layers is most important part, which is unique for Murana, and which does Murana an application catalog. We have two uh, other layers, but they need, used and needed when you need to complete, which is missing in uh, other engines, or for example, you already have some pieces and you just want quickly to run with them without like, converting existing run application or existing scripts to something. Uh, a little bit more about uh, application interoperability layer. Run appeal imperative object-oriented DSL, domain-specific language. We're trying, um, from one point of, uh, Murana PL is quite simple. It's very close to how Python and Java look like. So if your application developer has experience with any object-oriented language, it will be super easy to pick up and continue with it. Continue developing um, Murana PL like from day one. Uh, Murana PL gives you sandbox, uh, it's sandboxed uh, and built in on top of Python. So basically we didn't invent uh, like whole language per se. We don't have traditional stuff for, the, uh, for languages like compil compiler or translator or anything. We're mapping out this language to the Python uh, primitive which we built into our uh, engine. This gives us a sandbox from one point of view and simplicity from other point of view. Extending Murana is super easy. We don't write in our compiler. It will be stupid. In Murana, everything is an object, including every piece of your application an application itself. So even when you're running your application, you can continue using object-oriented design for your application, making each piece of your application also an object which can be used by other application from same stack. For example, if you're writing some complex uh, application, uh, one of the example would be Kubernetes application, is several objects which can be put in one package in one application and inheritors which extend this application can reuse them. So dependencies on interfaces and super deep decoupling. And at this point of time, I would like to leave you with Madhuri and a little Thank bit of information about Magnum. Thank you, Serge, for a very great introduction of Murano. So now I'll just try to explain what is Magnum and how does it work, what is the architecture of Magnum, and what features does it have. So to start with, uh, Magnum is the containers project for OpenStack. It provides a set of applications to manage your cloud applications on multi-tenant OpenStack cloud. So it allows a different kind of container orchestration engine. We call it COE, like Kubernetes, Swarm, and Mesos to be available as a first class resource on OpenStack. So uh, now this is uh, the architecture of Magnum. So, uh, uh, before starting uh, talking about how does Magnum work, so let's just take a look. What are the resources in Magnum? So we mostly have two resources in Magnum that is related to Magnum. One is the Bay model and the other is the Bay. So the Bay model is, uh, you can say, just like a Nova flavor. You specify which image to use, which key pairs to use, the network, and all the other kinds of parameters you specify in this Bay model. And then the next uh, one is the bay. So 
The Bay is a group of NOVA VMs where your different COE services are configured that runs on the top of the NOVA VMs and then you can run your uh, containers on it. And we also manage other kind of resources like uh, pod, replication controllers, uh, services and containers. These are all related to COE. So, um, and then we have two services in Magnum, that is the Magnum API and the Magnum conductor. And one of the most important part of Magnum is the heat templates. So we use heat for uh, the orchestration of the COEs. So we have heat templates for each of the COEs, like for Kubernetes, Swarm, and Mesos. So in these heat templates, we have two parts. One is the from the master node, and one is the minion nodes. So we have separate heat templates for each of uh, the nodes, and we speci uh, we have elements also, how do we configure like the Docker services on Nova VMs? And also various kind of configurations are there. For example, we need some kind of block storage for our no nodes to run our containers. So we specify all those things in this heat templates and we use this to deploy our cluster. So when you say like deploy a Swarm or a Kubernetes cluster for me, so then Magnum Conductor talks to heat and provides this heat template for specific COE, for Swarm or Mesos, maybe. And then heat talks to other OpenStack components like Nova, Neutron, Glance, and Cinder to deploy your cluster. So once our bay is up and running, we have a group of Nova VMs. Uh, you can see this is the Nova instances where our Docker services are running. And we ha like you can specify what number of nodes do you want in your clusters? Maybe you say, I want two master nodes or two uh, minion nodes. That is configurable. You can specify it when you create any bay. So uh, once this uh, uh, cluster is up and running, you can just uh, run your containers on it using the native clients, or maybe you can use the API available for this resources in Magnum. So now this is an overview, like uh, what are the resources and how, what do we manage in Magnum? So as I've already told you that we support three kind of COEs. One is the Kubernetes, the other is the Swarm, and Mesos. So, and like we do support scaling of nodes. Like when you say, I, I just want to scale up my node by two nodes or three nodes. You just have to specify like bay update and the node, uh, the node count. So Magnum talks to heat and heat uh, does the thing for you. It scale up or scale down the nodes. And uh, then I like we manage pod, service replication controller and containers. We have API for this uh, resources. You can use it to like create a pod or delete a pod or maybe update a pod. And we uh, like we mostly encourage people to use native CLIs for this uh, management because it's a huge container life cycle is huge. You cannot manage everything in Magnum. So we do have it, but we encourage people to use native CLIs. So now the most important slide, this is the features we have in Magnum. So uh, this I can skip, I guess, the cluster types. And uh, then we currently support Fedora atomic images and uh, the core OS images in Magnum. And then uh, the secure API endpoints. Like when we deploy any bay, we have uh, Magnum services running on one node, and then we have some Docker services running on other, another nodes. So this communication needs to be secure. It it should be secured by some way. So we have this. Uh, we make this communication secure using TLS certificates, and we do manage these certificates in Magnum. We have a way to store it in Magnum, or you can use Barbican also. That is configurable. It depends on user, which kind of uh, storage they want. And uh, yeah, that is, certificates are encrypted before we store it. And then the next part is the sender. So we have two use cases for sender in Magnum. One is the Docker volume. Like when you, you want a host where your services are, Kubernetes services or maybe Swarm services are running. So you need, some, you need some storage for your Docker services or containers to run. So we just specify like 20 gigs of uh, block storage we want for our bay. So that is created by our heat and mounted on our host to be used by Docker services. 
and then the next is the volume driver so like we need some persistent storage for containers so that containers uh, share between them and they use it so we have one uh, for kubernetes we have sender we just specify uh, the volume driver in our bay model that is sender for kubernetes and for mesos and swarm we have Rextray. so what we uh, do is when we when you deploy any bay this uh, services are configured on uh, our nodes minion nodes and master nodes and then uh, containers can easily use this volume for their use and then uh, the next feature is the high availability uh, magnum is highly available you just for example you can just specify the count of the node or the master node you want in your cluster for example you say the i need two master nodes so magnum deploys your cluster with two master nodes and the number of minion nodes you specify in your way and this master nodes are configured with neutron load balancer so this is used to balance our api service uh, for example kubernetes api services and then one more use case is we have containers running uh, on our cluster and we want it to be accessible from an external uh, external network so this neutral load balancer feature provides a virtual ip to the containers which you can use to access your containers from outside network okay thank you now i'm going to hand over to serge to just explain the question of the century yes so uh, starting from one cooler summit i guess or close to that almost like at the summit almost each day from two to five people asking me this question what should I do use, Magnum or Murana? I was one of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which way is better to deploy Kubernetes? Do you guys know about Magnum? And so on and so forth. So I would like to apologize. At the Vancouver Summit, we talked a lot about how Murana deploys uh, Kubernetes, how Kubernetes is cool, and how Murana deploys high level Kubernetes, and so on and so forth. But instead of that, we should actually been focused on the fact that Murana deploys it and which capabilities Murana provides in order to you write so complex application. Uh, fact that it's a really complex application can be like, understood from the fact that OpenStack community created specific project to deploy Kubernetes. So it's so complex to deploy. It. And instead of talking about how easy Murana can give you capabilities to automate such kind of deployment, we talked about that we can deploy it. And that was the mistake which lead to this talk. So in Tokyo, Intel, Rackspace, and Miranda's folks gathered, meditated a little bit, and made few decisions. First of all, integrate Magnum and Murana by creating a set of Murana application uh, which based on Magnum for deployment of Kubernetes, Mesos, and Docker Swarm. Make them compatible with regular Kubernetes applications for Murana, meaning that all the applications which you guys created probably for using a Kubernetes application in Murana as an uh, application to provision your uh, container management cluster can be compatible and easily switched to um, Magnum-based Murana application for deploying Kubernetes. We decided to do this talk and be smile, uh, smile and be happy. So what's the difference between previously written by uh, Muratis Kubernetes application and way how a new application is developed using Magnum? So first of all, we had only Kubernetes application. We didn't have support for Mesos and Docker Swarm. Uh, we used our own capabilities for orchestration and configuration management, and it was done uh, quite uh, like two pillars. Prebacked image, which contained um, binaries to speed up downloading of Kubernetes from internet. And we use shell scripts to automate, like orchestrating all the stuff to bring it up. New uh, application from the application operability layer looks pretty same. We share same interfaces. So essentially, other applications can use this one or that one without any issues by drop down, uh, selecting appropriate version or appropriate application in drop down in horizon. But all the magic is hidden from the user is hidden inside the Murana application. And we use Magnum plugin for Murana and Magnum itself, which does the magic of deploying these COEs for you. 
And let's take a look how it looks like. Sorry. OK, so this is the demo for our Magda map, which we have in Murano. So let's just start how does it work. And so we have this uh, classes and UI files and logo and manifest. This is the base package for any application in Murano. So we just create a zip out of it and then upload it as a package in Murano. So let's just upload it. So now you can see that this application, Magnum Bay app, is now available as a package in Murano. You can see this in uh, the UI. So you just have to go to Murano tab and then look at the applications tab. And there you can see the application. So we'll be able to see it under the application. So now you see that we have this Magnum Bay app here. You can just uh, click, hit on quick deploy to deploy it. So this, this is the form which will come out, and you have to fill it. These are these parameters are specific to Magnum. For example, for Bay, you have to specify a Bay name, and then the node, nodes count. So for example, uh, this is the master node count, and I'm just giving it one, the default default one. And then we for for any bay, you need a bay model because you need to specify the image ID, the key pairs, and everything for your bay. So this is the bay model which we create for our bay. So we'll just fill out this form. I'm really very sorry. This is a big form. We are on a work to split it in smaller pieces. So now we are going to. Uh, create a swarm cluster because that is not supported in Murano yet. But by using this, you can create a swarm or a mesos cluster from Murano also. So I'm just disabling the TLS to make it simpler for me to use the native client. Okay, so this will just take two or three minutes for our bay to be up and running, and our bay, our Magnum Bay will be configured with the Swarm services running on these nodes. We'll have two nodes here. One is the master node, and the other is the minion nodes. So then you can use any CLI to run on it. And we are on a way to, like, we have many application, Docker applications in Murano. So those applications ne uh, need to be compatible with this app. So we are on a way to create this, all the applications compatible with this app. So now you can see here that we have this uh, uh, in the bay list, and the status is create progress. As I told you that we use heat to do this orchestration. You can also see it in the heat stack list, that you have the stack there. And it will just be just up in, I guess, two or three minutes. And till then, Serge will, would like to explain about the plugins feature in Murano. Uh, as you remember, I will. Uh slightly move slides back a little bit uh, to this page. Um, here, um, oh, better, better to use this one, sorry. You see Magnum plugin. Magnum plugin for Morana. Why do we need it? So really quickly skip through this, and while deployment is in progress, I have a chance to explain. So Morana needs to talk with third party service to say something to this service. And in order, like, we, your application contains most of the business logic inside it using Run PL. But so there is always connectivity to different services, to your hardware load balancer, to your database uh, rack, which is stored somewhere, uh, to your Magnum inside the OpenStack, but still a service which is not um, part of the Murana. You need a plugin, a plugin which will expose these capabilities, this API, to the Murana in, in, on Murana PL level. So using plugins, you can extend this language by support of different third-party services. And after that, uh, use regular Murana PL to orchestrate everything to deploy it. So I guess uh, our deployment is really close to, fin to be finished. Yeah. Uh, we spawn like VM, we yeah. So now you see our bay is created, and uh, we can just go back and look. Uh, the status of the bay should now be create complete. And we get the API address for our Docker services to run our containers on it. So we'll just get the, uh, the, uh, the URL, 
and we can we'll just check whether our Docker services is up and running or not. So we'll just run, list the containers and see. Okay, we, I would have used the API address. I'm sorry for it. And just we see that our container is uh, Docker is configured and it is running. And now just let's run a simple hello world container to see whether everything is fine or not. Here, yeah. so we have now deployed a Swarm cluster from Murano using the Magnum plugin. So, so that using this plugin, you'll have feature of both Magnum and Murano in one plugin. That is Magnum plugin. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so answer to the question, not Murano or Magnum, Murano and Magnum. Murano uh, gives you UI, nice UI for end users to provision this application, an API for source service provisioning, an application API to your other applications to interact these other applications inside your catalog. And Magnum gives you provisioning and operations, automation API, development experience, choice of technologies for deploying different container orchestration engines. These constantly improved how this configuration is deployed, which is not really was the case with our application because we didn't wrote it to give capability of deploying Kubernetes and like focus on that. We're developing Murana. So if you need to have some application in your cloud and it doesn't have service like Magnum, Murana can easily automate it for you. Thank you, folks. Questions? Oh. We have two mics uh, in the auditorium. Morning, folks. Scott Fulton from the Newstack. I want to make sure I understand the relationships properly. When you have, when you're, when you're using a container-based microservices application, do all the services share a single bay? Yeah, you have a, a bay like nodes where your containers are running. Okay, and each bay has one uh, COE, container orchestration yeah. engine. So one Kubernetes version would run all the services on that bay. Yeah. And that, okay, I wanted to make sure I got that right. Thank you. Thank you. So which version of OpenStack are these integrated? Is it available in Kilo or Liberty? Or? This is demo developed uh, on Mitaka. Mitaka, okay. And the apps are also available right now? The, no. That so use the plugin? No. Yes. Sorry? No, the applications are, like, still we are working on to make all the Docker applications available in Murano to make it compatible with Magnum. Magnum? Okay. Yeah. But Magnum. what did you saw is already available and published yeah. on Murano App's repository so and Murano. So the Kubernetes is available? That no. app is available? Yes. Okay. Hi. Uh, great presentation. Uh, thanks for the useful info. Um, while Murano abstract the heat orchestration, so you have Murano as well as heat in parallel going on, right? So why we are integrating like you know you know through a plugin um, explicitly as a murano catalog app for magnum instead so murano can provide a choice of like whether you wanted to um, deploy your app like you know either on a vm using heat or on a container using docker or on a swam or a kubernetes right so we actually do that i mean yeah. uh, we didn't swap one application to another both of them will be available in a catalog and the user, when he will select for his Docker application, which uh, container management system to use, can select previous Kubernetes application, which is developed, uh, deployed through heat, or new ones using Magnum. Or even Docker, uh, single Docker host, which is available in Murana catalog, which de will deploy single VM with a Docker in, uh, on it and will run your container. Thank you. so, it's there, but it's abstracted in form of different application. We don't hard code everything in one piece and giving a choice in UI. It's completely is, uh, abstracted pieces, different applications with their own interface, which can be used in UI by selecting them. You don't need to cram everything to one application. So, but what you said is like Murano is not giving you the option currently to choose now. So whether that would be in, like, you know, in future releases. Or it something, will be soon. Can... It's actually the next step in our uh, application. And we with Maduri working on it yeah. to make available all the COEs available in Murano catalog, and as well 
as having some abstraction layer with previous Kubernetes application. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. So uh, just to be clear, the COEs are single tenant environments, correct? Uh, they yeah, run as a, a single OpenStack yeah, project. Yeah. Which we, now, I know in each of these uh, projects, the COEs, they all have their own separate uh, tenancy models. Either they have them or they're emerging. So how do you think about integrating the control planes for that when they finally arrive? Control plans? Uh, um, making the uh, API available to all the tenants in the, uh, in the cloud. So essentially, when you deploy your COE in the cloud, uh, it will be available as well as OpenStack APIs. Do I understand you correctly? Uh, well, multi-multi-tenantly. Yes, yes. Yes. The COE being multi-tenant that is coherent mm -hmm. with OpenStack underneath. Um, it's a tough problem. <laughs> not really. So I hope at some point of time Kubernetes will naturally support Keystone, uh, and we slightly talked about that previously, and maybe. Uh, you can use same backend for Keystone and Kubernetes, like LDAP, for managing the same set of users. But you always can deploy your Kubernetes cluster to some service tenant, because user itself doesn't need to access uh, to scaling of Kubernetes or anything. Access to scaling Kubernetes or to Magnum API in specific tenant needs to be given to ops team, which manage this uh, COE. Your users need to have access to the only COE API which can be a multi-tenant by using one backend of authentication. So I guess even now it can be configured, but it's not like this, and I hope it will be someday. Uh, as, far, as far as I know, I'm not really expert, Kubernetes SIG group is working on deep integration with OpenStack, meaning they will have integration on this layer too. Could you comment on uh, how is this approach better than using a Horizon plugin for Magnum. I don't know if there is a Horizon plugin, but I assume that if there is such a plugin, uh, what, what yeah. you showed can be done probably with that. Yeah, uh, like Murano also, uh, Murano is an application catalog, and it's have various applications. One of those is Kubernetes. And it's good for Murano to support as many as applications they can. They're supporting Kubernetes very, uh, very good. So. For users which are very less, uh, yeah, sorry. So it is good for Murano to accept Magnum because both are doing the same thing. That's why we are doing this thing. And if you have a plugin in Horizon, of course, that would be same. But it, it's add an advantage to Murano because we, Magnum has lots of feature for each COE. And that Murano can have. So quick answer, if you're planning only to deploy Kubernetes, you don't need Murano. You can use some um, Magnum dashboard for yeah. deploying Kubernetes or automate the CPIs for shell scripts or whatever, because you're using deployment of only Kubernetes. Murana is application catalog. It's in Magnum, Kubernetes is only one application, it's a huge variety of them. So if you want several give ability to your end users to deploy a set of application, is it your IT department or real end users, then Murana is the answer. Thanks. Thank you, folks. Uh, we finished slightly quickly, so uh, I will be here. So if you have any questions, uh, we will yeah. be happy to answer you. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.